I mean, look at all this stuff Rebecca brought with her. Apparently our teachers have been lying to us all these years. So who knows? Hey, now don't blame us. Blame the bloody books they wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Feel. <laughs>even with two more people shooting her concerned looks, she's swift to shrug it off. It's fine. I just had a little accident. Mm-hmm. A little accident. Hard to believe when her other arm's nursing the supposedly fine arm. Isabella doesn't buy any of it either. In a library? Yeah, it kind of caught me off guard. Something's happened there, hasn't it? I don't have to elaborate on the question further. Shortly, she goes very still, and the hand placed over her right arm shifts ever so slightly, its grip on the limb tightening. Not too firm to hurt, but just enough for a gesture of comfort for herself. Warily, she casts a glance at everyone in the room. But only the one she spares for Isabella lingers longer, and in that moment, something unspoken passes between them. An understanding. It strikes me seconds later how utterly familiar her expression is. It's the same one I've seen far too many times in Isabella. Since that day at the movie house, every time her attempts to warn us have been so rudely dismissed. Let me see. Can... can we? We have to check if it's bad. Rebecca hesitates for a moment. Then, after a moment of consideration, she sighs and reaches for the hem of her sleeve. It raises just enough for Isabella to take a good look at it. Not swollen, but a large portion of her skin starting to turn an ugly shade of purple. Oh, that is gonna be one hell of a nasty bruise. Thank you, Zach. Tell me about it. It was a library cart that hit me. You know, the old metal ones they keep near the history section. Ouch! Like I said, nasty. But she's <laughs> there? She went after you. Yeah, I... I was in the archives, looking something up. Suddenly, she was just there. Belle, she was using my own students against me. What kind of terrible, terrible person does that? Oh, it makes my blood boil. Oh, there's the Scott. You should have just ran. That woman's not something you can hit with a... with a book. <laughs> Funny you should say that. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> Kills you. <laughs> Just watch me. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh it up, Ashton. I did. Then the bloody cart came out of nowhere. And you know what? If it weren't for a damn book, I would be dead by now. 
Silence descends in the room as the gravity of that one word hits all of us. Dead. Another close call. Another would have. Another one we've narrowly avoided. How long can we keep this up? We're bound to break at one point. No normal human being with a sane mind can last like this. It's a miracle Isabella hasn't cracked yet. After all, she was the one who found that letter. I've expected her to cave in by now, yet her voice, calm and composed in the face of this, is what cuts through the thick air. I'll go get a cold compress for that arm. You guys take a seat first. Ashton and I, we, we have a lot of things to talk about. That marks the end of it. At least for the time being. And as soon as Isabella returns and hands Rebecca the cold compress she promised, we get straight down to business. Surprisingly easy considering the rigid air in the room. Although there's some tense fumbling for words at first, the whole conversation gains steam once what happened last night at BRC has been put on the table. All at once, everything we've brushed off, carelessly ignored, and rudely dismissed have been laid out for close scrutiny. Zach's encounters with the woman in his dreams, Rebecca's close brushes with death every time she appears, the dread, the fear, the terror she brings out even in the bravest of us. Everything. Because no matter how bleak this all seems, there must still be a way out of this. There has to be. Logic be damned. Or at least, that's what Isabella and I would like to believe. I don't like Yet that music. Huh? I don't like that music. <laughs> I don't either. I'm super on board, though. I'm super on board. <laughs> of course she is. Of course Ghost I am. fucking attacking all of them at once. I'm the only one that's been super hype every time Ghost Lady shows up. <laughs> Until she actually shows up, then Buttons is just as, like, whoa, what the fuck is the rest of us? Are, yeah, well, that's because it's natural reaction, but, like, in real life, a creepy Ghost Lady could show up, and I would be, like, scared for a second that it'd be like, fucking red! <laughs> Lord. And that's why you would be the first to die. That's why yep. I am the stereotypical white woman that goes, Hey, a spooky house! Oh my god, let's check it out! <laughs> oh my god, a basement and it's boarded up with symbols on it! I wonder what it could mean. Yeah, that would be me. I've accepted my fate. <laughs> Good. At least you know. Yet... Even as the cold morning light shifts to the warm hues of the late afternoon, and eventually night, none of this still makes a fucking damn sense. Darkness has fallen, but we're still nowhere near figuring things out. If anything, we're more at a loss than we've ever been for before we even started this. The next thing I know, frustration rears its ugly head and sheets of paper I've been holding smacks the table harder than I've intended. Go to the mansion! <laughs> Don't go to a mansion, Don't listen to buttons. <laughs> the sound of it echoes loudly in the small room, and everyone simply falls silent. Along with it is a release of another long-held breath. Perhaps the hundredth since this morning. We aren't getting anywhere at this rate. Don't just drop it. There must be something in this we aren't seeing yet. It's an odd thing to hear from her. The very words I've been telling myself every single time I find myself facing a dead end. The garage door is about to close, just FYI, so I might be quiet for an extended period. <laughs> 
We can use a little of the optimism right now, I guess. I know, but what are we supposed to be looking at here in the first place? Well, we already looked through those files. You're the one that picked it out last night, right? All of them? I'm pretty sure every person we've checked in there isn't necessarily involved. One client possibly died of old age. Remember, you found that dumb paper. <laughs> Not so dumb if it can kill all of us. <laughs> God damn it, Zach. Very funny, Z-Man. Anyway, like I said, you discovered that paper right before the open house. No one else was allowed inside during that time. It's too broad of a scope if we include every single person. In fact, the only notable ones are C and Jean Marie. Oh god, that was so white. Oh. I'm dying on the inside. <laughs> Do you think we're good to read that journal article now? I, I can't imagine that it would have spoilers since it was from the morning. Aww. Aww. Fucking dorks. <laughs> wow. Zachary arrived at Salemwell, tired and frazzled. Upon learning that he had come from the Ermengarde mansion that morning, Ashton could only express his relief that he was safe. An amused Zachary teased him for worrying, much to the other man's embarrassment. To Ashton and Isabella's relief, Rebecca later called back. Soon, she showed up at Salem well, looking worse for wear. When the detective asked about it, worried, all the redhead could give was a frustrated answer. Fortunately, before the topic turned grim, Isabella stepped in. All right. But if we're going to include them in the count, shouldn't there have been more than enough people to end this fucking curse already? How does this thing even work? Yeah, okay, they went in and out of this place, but no, you still don't get it. What I'm trying to say about those clients is... Shouldn't we look into the mansion too? That's where the letter came from. That's where she came from. Maybe it's just as the professor says. He did tell me there might be more to this than what I might be thinking. Yeah. Actually, you know, that just reminded me of something. Uh, buttons. What you brought up in one of the previous episodes about that one duchess, was it? Or some lady who was like a socialite uh, here in the U.S. And that, like, on the surface, she was presented as, oh, you know... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, Delphine Dulari? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the New Orleans lady. Yeah, uh, as, like... You know, on the surface, she's presented as a very respectable and charitable woman. But then when you dig deeper, there was all sorts of disgusting shit that she was doing. Um, if the parallel is to Charlotte, um, that might explain why there's a dungeon underneath the mansion. Mm. Oh, hella. Yeah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at all this stuff Rebecca brought with her. Apparently, our teachers have been lying to us all these years. So who knows? Hey, now, don't blame us. Blame the bloody books they wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Feel. <laughs> Quietly, Isabella reaches for one of the papers Rebecca has, bought, uh, Rebecca has brought with her and carefully inspects it, the words printed on the page. A copy of an old newsprint from even before the city has been founded. Her eyes narrow with each line it passes, but lingers the illustration of the noblewoman's servant. Why do they have to keep this in the restricted section? Rebecca merely shrugs at her inquiry, but her own annoyance seeps through her answer. How should I know? I wasn't even aware we have archives that go as far back as this. This is before the city was even founded. As a matter of fact, if it weren't for Andrew's help, I wouldn't have gotten my hands on any of it. 
Maybe they didn't think it would be important to talk about it. After all, this is more Anselms than ours. How many more episodes are we going to have to go through before they realize that they need to go talk to Professor Clark again? <laughs> this is killing me. <laughs> I will I be the first confirmed something. Yeah, I wonder who! Mm. Jesus Christ, Ashton! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Be strong, Buttons. <laughs> be strong for mother. Be strong for mother, indeed. I'm fucking dying. <laughs> Why else would these tell a completely different story? Revising what's written seems a useless endeavor on its own when you have nothing to gain from it. But this might as well mean what happened in that mansion years ago also equates into all of this. And the letter Isabella found? It's at the heart of it. The why and the how is what we're missing here. If I'm going to go by what Andrew told Zack, the connection between the letter and the mansion's curse may run deeper than what we've initially thought. We won't be able to figure this out without looking into the other. Fuck. How do I... The mansion's a private property now. I can't just waltz in there. Not with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Passion. It's called breaking and entering. It's fine. You've done it before. It's like the third time in this game. It's fine. <laughs> I'd rather die before I even think of begging right to let me in and investigate the place. Careful with what you, what you wish for. Dude, you don't have to. You just have to fucking, like, throw Johannes out a window or something. <laughs> or, like, for real, you could probably just have Zack ask Hannah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> One thing's very clear after these last two days, however. We're not safe anywhere, and I have to act as fast as I... I have to act fast if I want to keep my own friends alive. We can't keep running away. Sooner or later, she'll get us. So something I just thought of. Uh, Coco, you said that you've been going back and, like, playing through earlier parts of the game, right? Yeah. Yes. That's why, like, the percentages are high. Uh -huh. I'm wondering how much of that is going to affect this run-through. Because huh. I know that, like, for example, with 999, if you play other parts of the story before finishing one route, it'll actually cause it to, like, not end up in a dead end, and instead you'll actually complete the game. Is uh, that but... from a programming glitch, though? Uh, no, that actually is intentional because in 999 you have to find certain things before you can unlock the ending of the game. Oh, so uh, it, pull, it pulls an RE. Yeah, and I'm wondering if this does that too, where, you know, if you are playing other parts of the game before you reach certain parts, like, let's say we're in Ashton's chapter, normally there's a locked node here that, you know, you can't bypass and it pretty much ends the game there. But if you have a second playthrough and you're completing earlier chapters, that it unlocks it so you can continue through. I doubt that they're doing that, but food it for would thought. be interesting if they did that. But so far, the stuff that's been story update notices has been stuff for decisions that we have made. Yeah. So, like the way I think it works is that each each like playthrough is independent on its own. But if you want to get, like, the full story of what happened in the past, you need to... The full like... immersive experience. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Then again, there's other reasons why certain things affect uh, other timelines in 999 and uh, VLR. Ironically enough, that stuff is part of the actual game, so... <laughs> I doubt that they're doing that here, where it's like, oh yeah, no, this is totally, you know, across timelines and everything. Anyway. Sighing, I stand up and stretch out the kinks in my back after several hours of sitting. We've been at this for too long. A break is needed. Time to let everything sink in, or else we'll burn out. I know I will, and it's another thing I can't let happen when they're all counting on me like this. 
albeit unspoken, it's in their eyes as they look at me, look up at me, waiting. We've been at this since morning. We should take a break for a few. Ooh, that oh, nice! Yes! <laughs> that's, that's an interesting sound. Oh, yeah. so hype. That's a new sound. Yee yee yee. The rest of it never makes it out of my mouth as something heavy and grating sounds from the far end of the room. Harsh booming noise rending through the eardrums of everyone in the room. Ghostly is just like, oh, how convenient. You've all put yourself in one place so I could kill you all. Yay! All at once, the three of them are on their feet. Quickly, I palm for my gun on the table. However, before I can pull it up and remove the safety, the whole racket stops. Again, what are you gonna do? Shoot the ghost? I mean, Becca hit it with a book, so... Fair, true. but she's already dead. You can still cause damage to her, clearly. You can't kill her again. You don't know that. <laughs> You know what? Why don't you try it out and tell me how it works? <laughs> hey. Wow. Don't, don't kink shame this ghost. What the fuck? What? <laughs> Are you saying she gets her rocks off from being shot? She Maybe. clearly has a thing for pain. Yeah, causing it. She Well, she hasn't healed herself and she's a creepy ghost lady. Lord. It's gotta be in the realm of possibility. <laughs> Stillness descends in the room, and amidst the sudden hush, the four of us exchange anxious glances. Terry just ignores the conversation. <laughs> just move on. God damn it. Don't king shame the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> now Moon's gonna drag my ass in the comments, just watch. Can't wait. So. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna be like, you don't get any right to kiss shame anyone, you're a goddamn furry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's on record now. <laughs> it's been on record for a while, what the fuck? <laughs> Welcome to the club. So much for a break. Ashton, that might be... Gather everything. No questions asked. They waste no time getting to work, piling up the documents we've been reading through. Even Isabel is unusually silent as she gathers everything in her arms. Her own movements sharp and precise, a deep furrow in her brow. There's fear, but something hardened and urgent overshadows it. But the moment doesn't last. Before we can even finish, another noise ups the tension already gripping the place. Is it your fucking ringtone? <laughs> no! Oh! oh. Mm. Nice! Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> Fun times! Oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> Suddenly the lights go out, and the wardrobe at the end of the room rattles, as if something inside begs for freedom. Cautiously, eyes glued to it, I take a step forward and release the lock from my gun. I'm gonna shoot the fucking ghost. <laughs> I'm no trigger happy person. I'm not even sure if this will work on a ghost. But right now, it's smooth surface against my palm, with the trigger on my finger, no, with my finger on the trigger, <laughs> provides the closest thing I have to relief as I approach the closet. Also, that's Ashton, horrific gun safety. Doing? That's what? It's horrific gun safety. I don't think that's a good idea. We should just. I'm gonna shoot the fucking ghost! Do it! <laughs> Weird as they all are, they immediately stop with the slight raise of my hand. But the edge is there while they all huddle in the space between the door and the room. In case this goes south, whatever I find inside, they have enough time and space to run from their position. Also, I'm just imagining, like, if he shoots and it fucking goes through, like, the apartment wall and into the neighbors. Yeah. Well, that guy was rude as fuck, it's fine. 
No, that was Becca's other neighbor. We don't know who's on the right side of Be of Isabella. Becca? Uh, sure. Probably, yeah. In two deep breaths, I've crossed the room and stood in front of the closet. Get ready for the QTE. Woohoo! Whatever's inside has yet to stop thrashing. Instead, it has now moved to banging at the door. Louder and louder the longer I dally. Another shallow breath. I glance at my companions. A nod. Something creaks. Then, in the next moment, I'm grasping at the handles and swinging the doors wide open to reveal... Clothing. Horrible, horrendous <laughs> clothing. The worst ensemble I've ever seen in my entire life. But it's organized by color, and that pleases me aesthetically. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Right away, I part the clothes hanging on it, and still none. No ghost. No woman. Not a single trace of whatever... whoever's inside. Don't lower your guard. Mm -mm. Confused, I glance back towards my companions, only to see them mirroring the same expression on my face. The noise has finally stopped, but I'm quite sure it isn't my imagination. Or maybe it is, and I'm just too strung up that my head's now making things up. I don't think they would be reacting that way if that was the case, Ashton, but you do you, boo. Whatever the case is, we need to get out of here soon, as soon as possible. This only confirms we aren't safe anywhere. Without bothering to close it, I move back, ready to leave, adrenaline now coursing through every vein in my body. Next, it's going to be the mini-fridge. <laughs> in the it's next second... <laughs> exactly, it's going to come from the bin of cut ramen. <laughs> She's gonna pop out and be like, you live like this? <laughs> In the next second, I'm barking orders and... We should go. Everyone, we need to... <sighs> oh, no. Ah, yes. Rip in pieces. I'm sent sprawling on my back as something cold catches my ankle and yanks. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! I'm so excited! The resulting fall knocks the wind out of me. You ready for the QTE? No. <laughs> Pain racks my whole spine and the back of my head as it collides against the floor, with force enough to dislodge my own brain from my skull. Unfortunate timing of my fucking phone there. <laughs> A moment lasts before it starts before stars fade from my vision. And then I sense it. Cold tendrils twisting around my ankles. The smell of vile rot assaulting my nose. Nauseating. Sickening. A foul smell draining every feeling in my body. The moment her horrid laughter, still as unpleasant and vicious as the last time I've heard it, reaches my ears, my eyes snap open. Perhaps it's just inexperience. Or maybe my mind's still attempting to comprehend this. Does she seem slightly more human now? Yeah, I was actually gonna say, wow, A she looks bit. like Isabella. Regardless, the minute my, la my eyes land on her, the whole of my body freezes. The gun in my hand turns useless in my grip on as my grip on it slackens. It's in the manner her gaze bores on me, and I'll say, the look and utter hatred and malice, I've seen it loads of times. From suspects, mostly murderers, who never regretted their actions despite being caught. This is the face of someone you can no longer reason with. And I know, the moment she laughs again and starts dragging me towards her, it's already going to be the... Ashton! Snap out of it! 
No. I can't die here. Not yet. Kick her in the face. The haze fades from my mind, an instinct kicks in, then and there. Everyone out! Get out! Get out of here! With one powerful tug, I yank my foot out of her grip and scramble back to my feet, ignoring the piercing wails she fills the room with. Within the span of a second, I'm gunning for the door, grabbing the wrist of the first person I, my hand can reach, and leading everyone out. I'm gonna fucking die if you grab the ghost lady. <laughs> I'm <gonna> fucking die. <laughs> Into the hallway. Down the flight of steps. And right inside my car. I waste no time flooring on the gas pedal the second the last person closes the door behind them. In a short while, I'm driving us out of Salem well. I don't even entertain the thought of the winding of winding down just yet. Even as the last of the woman's painful cries fade into the night. October 31, Monday. Well, that was fun. <laughs> With the help of his friends, Ashton tried to find a way to free themselves of the curse, piecing together what they currently know. But before they could figure it out, a ruckus coming from Isabella's closet broke the silence of the room. And with that, we shall leave things right here. Thank you guys for joining us, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Coco here with Stan, Shadow, and Moon, and we are continuing Phoenix Wright. Um, not really an attorney at all. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's fine. Fraud, it's legal. Yeah, Fraud's I mean, legal, so fraudulent lawyers are legal. Yeah, only murder is illegal in this world. <laughs> it, it, as long it, as it, Phoenix it, it, doesn't murder somebody, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, even if he does, if this is what passes for, probably still fine. <laughs>